another day. All right, let's ride. Crazy things going on in Chicago right now, but I'm gonna get to that in a minute. First, I wanna talk about my hometown of Jacksonville, Florida real quick. So here I was earlier in the week, well, last week, minding my business, scrolling through my little Facebook feed. And then I see an article or a, a post about a consultant firm in Jacksonville, Florida. And what this firm is doing is that they're, um, they're basically trying to help curtail the violence in my hometown. So it's a group from Chicago, and they're called Cure Violence, I believe. And they're down there to help assess the crime and prevent violent attacks before they happen, is what I read. So, yeah, they're there to identify those at risk for violence and then prevent that from happening. And it sounds easy, but in a city that big, with that many pockets and neighborhoods and just that many people that have been there for years interconnected, I don't know how successful it's going to be. I wish them the best of luck, and it's only costing the city $7,500 to get a company to come down there. Now, it's a sad state of affairs, kind of, when you got to have a city come from outside. People from a different city come there to tell you how jacked up your city is, but at least there's some sort of effort being made, because I guess whatever's being done there isn't working. I don't know I'm not home, but for the city to reach out says a lot. Embarrassing, yes, but hey, I'd rather be embarrassed and get the shit fixed than let shit keep going the way it is. And I say that because not a few minutes after I read that did I see something else that said there was three shootings in three hours in my hometown. Three different shootings, three separate places, and then one of the guys, well, one of the victims died. And that was like the shooting on the south side. And it just lets you know, like, the shit that's really happening... I think that people there and just in cities like that, period, really don't appreciate life. We don't understand the gravity of taking someone out. Now, 100%, I don't know the circumstances of these shootings. I don't know what it was for because, well, I don't want to hear about anybody getting shot the fuck up for stupid shit. There are certain things I understand. I'm going to get to that later on. But there are certain reasons why I wouldn't have so much of a problem, like somebody shooting at you or something like that. But then there's another thing I'm going to get to later, why I wouldn't mind. But it's wild. There's crazy things going on in the city. And then I, I looked at um some national news, and apparently there's a Coast Guard lieutenant that's accused of plotting to kill prominent Democrats and plotting to kill some people that work at CNN. It's like people that they feel are catering to the left. And this shit is, this shit is out of control. And that's why I said what I said a little while ago when I was like, Hey, if you let your kid go out there and wear a MAGA hat, be prepared for something to probably happen to that kid. That shit, to me, is like a gang bandana. That's just how I feel. But for people other than gang members, just because of the way people act when they see that shit, there is no real liberal, I guess, logo or symbol to make people believe that, um, or to let those know that you identify with this particular side of what's going on. There is no real symbol for that. So they're safe. The people that have their liberal beliefs, they're safe. Because there's aggressive folks on both sides because both sides feel strongly about it. And it's good that the country's involved in the politics. Hopefully people are actually going through and listening to people and what they're saying before they jump to these conclusions. But it's good to see that involvement, especially in the youth. But I don't like it when I see it to be antagonistic. Like, you're never going to get your point across. I said it a, a bunch of times before. And when people wear that hat and they go out in big groups like that, meet the demographic, no matter how legally right they are to wear their hat, just their clothes, they can do whatever the fuck they want to do as long as whatever space they're in allows it. People are going to react. And you may get some support, and you may get negative feedback, 
And my point in bringing this back up is, it just shows that how real this shit is to people. How deep this has gotten because I think instead of people just looking at it as two political parties, we got to look at it for real, for real. The thing is that people feel like their beliefs are being disrespected and challenged on both sides. And that's why I think that it's gotten this bad. And people are hurt by shit because they may have been somebody who you, who you like on a normal level, on a regular level that you kick it with every day. Then to come down, come out, come to find out they feel like this and you're in the extreme opposite of that. And I think it's now to the point where people are picking sides and only, only people that are crazy like that. I don't think everybody's like that. Just guys I work with every day that we don't necessarily agree. But the thing is, we take the time out to listen to one another and figure out why. And if we leave still disagreeing, it's like, all right, cool. Let's let's go get something to drink. What are you doing for lunch? It's not the be all end all for us because we know we're all on the same team. No matter what you do politically, as long as you don't disrespect me and I don't disrespect you, the relationship can continue. The friendship can go forward. That don't mean that I'm not going to have your back if we out somewhere and somebody try to fight you. No, I'm still there with you. I'm still a homie. We just got a difference of opinion. And with the social media thing, it's like the people that are arguing are peop- probably people that aren't really close anyway. Because I had a situation like that where me and a guy didn't necessarily disagree, but by the time we got to work, it's cool. We got to see each other. We got to interact. It's with these people that don't have to actually be around the folks they disagree with. They get to lash out and they get to wild out and act and say however they want to. And then they're insulated by their little pocket of people that only agree with what they agree with. So they know they don't know how to take an L in the conversation and move on and grow from that, this, that, and the third. They they take it and that shit's built it builds up as rage and then they plan to do shit like this. Or they're in a situation where they're the only one that feels the way they do, and then they feel attacked. Because I don't know what this the hell this dude's problem is. I don't know why you just don't you just don't shut the TV off or don't listen to something if you feel that strongly about it. Like, as a grown-up, I would advise you to, you know, pay attention to it and, and be able to at least poke holes on it or prove it or, you know, prove something against it or learn something from it. But apparently he was inspired by a terrorist, this a Norwegian dude named uh, Christopher Paul Hassan, I guess. No, that may be the guy who was doing it. But I think um, this dude was uh, inspired by a Norwegian uh, domestic terrorist from a report I read. I'm, I just That's ridiculous. Like, that's, that doesn't make any sense. You're taking politics just a little bit, a little bit too far. Way too far. Nuts. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on from the semi-political conversation and jump on to the sports. And the only thing in sports that really matters to me right now is how Zion Williamson exploded out of that goddamn Nike. Now, I'm late to this because this happened, like, earlier in the week. But the fact that this man can just destroy his shoe by stopping. And he stopped on the dime for the most part, but the way he stopped, his fucking shoe just exploded. And he's a big dude. He's like 6'9". I think he's listed at like 6'9", close to 300. But he's not like a sloppy 300. He's like a big, solid 300. Like, this motherfucker, like he worked on the railroad back in the day swinging a hammer. Like, he's one of them. Like, he's just, just muscle. And he stopped, and that motherfucking shoe exploded. I thought maybe that it it kind of opened up a little bit, and he slid through. Like, when you see the replay, nah, like, he came clean out that shoe. And unfortunately, he ended up hurting his knee. They don't think it's too bad. He should be back this season. But it's, it's a blow for Duke. That's like 20-something points easy erased from them. And I don't, I'm not a Duke fan. But this kid's going to be there for a year. He's not like a real Duke player to me. Like, all these one and dones, I don't really consider them players at the school. You got to be there for some years for me to look at you like somebody I hate, like a Christian Leitner or Bobby Hurley or some shit like that. Like, I don't really hate the the guys coming out of Duke these days like I did when I was younger. And I'm watching basketball, college basketball more. Not recently, but I'm paying attention to it more than I have in a long time. And there's just there's nobody out there like this kid right now. R.J. Barrett may be a better basketball player for sure. There's better shooters, yes, but better athletes, no. No, this man is like, he's like grown man athletic. 
And don't get it twisted by me just mentioning his size because there's other kids out there that are big, but this guy's big and athletic. I don't want to use the, the F word talking about him because I feel like after a while, you know, it, it kind of gets fucked up. You calling somebody a freak, but he's a next level world class. And I say basketball athleticism. Crazy. He's ready for the league. So he's. I would be shocked if he wasn't just doing his year at Duke and then dipping out because what he can do is crazy. But with that, you got to consider the amount of, I guess, force and energy he can exert trying to move. And when you stop like that, them little ass shoes ain't meant to hold you. You need a pair of LeBrons. You don't need a pair of Paul George shoes. You need shoes built for a goddamn tank like LeBron. That's what you, no more Paul George. And he looking like Nike. What the fuck is going on? What happened? Like, that's my signature shoe. What happened? And the kid's big, man. That's what it is. The kid's big and he's strong. And he probably done that a thousand times without that happening. But that day was just too much. Yeah, too much grip. Too much grip, too much drip. But, uh, I hope he gets better, man, because I, I like seeing them damn highlights. Even though I hate the team he plays for, the highlights are crazy. And uh, speaking of college basketball, uh, the coach of Syracuse, um, Mr. Bo, I think his first name is Jim. I think it's Jim Boheim. He actually, he I respect his actions. He was driving, and I think there was somebody on the side of the road. He ended up hitting a guy, killing a guy. He got out the car, attempted to render first responder medical aid and was even trying to wave down people in traffic. I'm not sure if he's the one who called 911, but he owned up to the shit. And we've heard a few stories, like especially back in the day, people getting hit and just rolling. And as a, as a you know, semi-celebrity, especially in his sport, he's a big name. He probably could have kept going. And the fact that he didn't shows me he has a lot of integrity. And I respect him for it. And I'm glad he, he dealt with it like a man because he's a leader of men and I can, I can just really respect him for it, man. So one time for him stopping, even though that man lost his life, it's unfortunate. But just the fact that he stopped is, is more or less what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's, that's brave of him. That's brave. And, um, I was thinking, I was thinking about sports really. And I was thinking about how people, how people lose themselves in it and then how people win. And I came up with this thing that's probably been around for a long time. And I know it has. I just don't know if it's been said that way, because when I when I think about it, it makes me makes me remember the New England Patriots, who I, I'm not a fan of, but they get shit done. And what I was thinking about was ego versus execution. Now I recently tried to get my ass back on the basketball court this weekend and put up some shots. And I've been, you know, I had shoulder surgery a while back, and I haven't been as active as I'd like to be. But I don't walk around the house with like a little ball, flipping it up, like, oh yeah, I make that shot. The release feels good. Now, this is like a little ball for a kid, but it still, it feels, it feels great. Like, that wrist pop lets me know that would have went in for real. And that was all wrong. It was a Jesse. It was a lie. I got out there on the basketball court thinking I could knock down some shots and um, and make things happen like I, I would have been had I been actively playing. No, I had a rude fucking awakening that I should have known was coming. There's no way after not shooting the ball for damn near a year, you can get back out there and just knock down shots. So as I'm throwing up brick after brick this building this house, I got to thinking about how the all-time greats, how the individual players and the teams, how they succeeded. And it's like I said, um, last go around, every person in the professional sports league is a superstar somewhere. They may not be a superstar in the league. They may be a role player. Cool. But in their backyard, in, in their, to their family, to their friends, to their neighborhood, to their city, at some point, they were looked at as a superstar. I don't give a damn if they played juco ball somewhere, then went to college, then went to the league, or they played juco football, then went to, or juco basketball, and then went to the league. They were a star at some point. Somebody had to notice them and give them a shot to be in the league. And uh, ego versus execution comes into play for me when I think about that. Because some of these guys get to the league, and they're not the... They're not the, in the spot that they would normally have been in. You may have come in the league as an elite scorer, but not be known for that. Okay, listen, I know you used to getting 20, 20 points, 20 rebounds a game, but you know what you do today? You rebound and you try to block shots. 
that's what you do. Because these people come out as things where they're rare. Like, not everybody's 6'10", 230 pounds. Not everybody's 6'1", 225 pound wide receiver. You know what I mean? So, and not everybody's that like, can be like a, a 6'10", point guard like Ben Simmons that can handle that can handle the rock. But some people make it. And they play that way their whole time. Like, the LeBrons, the Jordans, the Kobe's, guys like that. And that's when you get guys whose ego fuels them and they're still efficient and they can still execute. Their ego, they, their ego equals execution. But for other guys that can't get to that point, that are on that level, they have to sacrifice their ego in order for the team to execute in a better spot. If you think there's no better organization right now than the Patriots right now. Sure, there's guys that can go out there and get, that can blow the top off of defense playing wide receiver, but... Edelman is willing to just run the same amount of routes and do that and do just his job the exact way he needs to be done in order for them to see, succeed. The running blacks that play there, don't, they don't get the carries that they would get on other teams. They get a few carries here and there, but they like to have them come out the backfield and they run the fullback. And even a wide receiver playing in there with Gronk, if you're a wide receiver and you're looking at Gronk and you're getting upset because he's getting these catches and you're the wrong team. Because him catching them footballs is going to eventually lead to you getting open. And that's the thing where you have if execution versus ego. And their execution is always going to win. Because I can either have so much ego that I try to do more than what I need to do. And go off script. Or I do exactly what the fuck I'm told. And the team wins. Especially at these dependent you know, uh, positions like wide receiver running back. You got to get the ball. If you go off script and do something you want to do because you feel like you can make a play happen, it's going to show. If you're a wide receiver and you run the route you want to route, guess what? The fucking ball ain't going to be there. It's going to be somewhere else. If you're a cornerback and you don't pay attention to the scheme and you think you have coverage over the top by the safety and you don't, guess what? You're getting beat. There's only a select few people that can let their ego fuel them to execute on the level they need to do to succeed. But some people, some coaches, I'll say, and capture those guys or pick out the right guys to work in their system if you look at a team like the San Antonio Spurs. They've been successful for a long time. But Popovich has them being more efficient than ego-driven. A lot of times their players don't go out there and make stupid plays. They do what Pop puts them in position to do. And they go out there and they win games and they go to the playoffs and they win championships. Not lately, but... They got a few rings down there in San Antonio. And it's been the same way. It's never been like this crazy, exciting play. It's always been efficient basketball play. Are some of those plays exciting? Yes, but it's always been due to their efficiency that they made the plays in the first place. But some people's ego equals that, a la Michael Jordan, who can will himself to do shit. Kobe Bryant, people like LeBron. Like even Magic Johnson was a was like that. And it took him a while because... He was so focused on trying to be be efficient. He didn't let his whole ego through. Like the coach had to tell him to go out there and score points. But he was so busy trying to make sure that Kareem was getting the ball. He wasn't doing what the coach needed him to do. Because he was worried about Kareem's ego. But when the coach went out there and said, no, Magic, you got to start doing. It's starting to be on you now. And they flourished. And it all comes down to good leadership. Especially when it comes to sports. And that, I mean, that's it's true for the workplace and all that too. You can go above and beyond in the workplace and it may work out for you. Or you may be told to stay in your lane. And then in the workplace, you may do what you think is efficient. And somebody may tell you, you need to step up. In the workplace, I say it's all about balance. And uh, unless you're the one in charge. And on sports, you can only do what the coach allows you to do. Unless you're just that goddamn bad. I just think it's a part of life when you come to trying to get something done. Or there be a video game or you're trying to just get through some type of project or something in your personal life you want to do, whatever. I think it plays a part. And it just, I just thought about that because I was thinking about sports and I figured I'd give it out to the world. But that's what that was. And now for the messiness. And Chicago is having a hard time right now because Robert Kelly, Robert Kelly was arrested. Ten counts of aggravated sexual abuse. Boom. I don't, I don't know who thought this wasn't coming. But when they released that doc, it's like 
it's almost like, man, we can't let this guy just be out on the streets, especially if, he, if he's in your city. Somebody got to go get this motherfucker. And they found a way because we all knew as soon as they put the documentary out, they're going to start really, really looking at you and seeing what you got going on. And people will start to come forward, and I guess that's what happened. They locked his ass up. And I just want to look at the people who were like, these girls are coming out for him after the money. What money? I told you guys this guy was only like worth, net worth a million dollars. So that can be homes, assets, vehicles, shit like that. That's not what you got in your bank account. Because the judge said his bail for a million dollars. He had to pay 100000 on 100000 or something on that. He ain't got it. He ain't got it. His lawyer's talking about this due to mismanagement, mismanagement hangers on, and bad deals. No, it's not. The people that, it's not mismanagement. The people manage him just right. Hey, you out here being the freak? Well, guess what? You got to pay me X amount of money to stick around and continue to work for you. Now, I believe they're evil for partaking in that shit and even supporting him, but that's what the fuck happened. It is what it is. Like, he did do that shit. Or it's highly, it's highly likely he did this shit and they were supporting him doing it. Now he ain't got no damn money. Learn how to read. You want to work video cameras and all this shit? Learn how to fucking read and make sure your business is done right. And get people around you that are going to hold you accountable. Now you in jail out here fucked up. And he's probably, he's going to go down for all this shit. I don't see him beating this. Not with everything that's been put out there. And they got... They got the whole lifetime series of testimony. So I really don't see him beating this. And they're saying three of the girls were minors. And there might be a video. So this motherfucker is basically done. And then you got goddamn Jesse Smollett. It's goddamn Jesse. He ends up getting arrested for falsifying police reports. And uh, he, however, was able to make bond and get out. Then he gets suspended from the cast of Empire because they're like, listen, they basically don't want the stress on their show. So the last two episodes he will not be a part of for the season. I'm pretty sure they're going to let him go. And I, I just would think that um, that would be the next course of action because who would want that distraction on their set while they're trying to get shit done? You got other people there trying to work. Nobody wants to be affected by this. You don't want them getting harassed and questioned by this because you know what's going to happen. People are going to... Um, approached him about anything he did so it's a distraction and they got a show to do people got to work people don't want his life coming into their homes and all that shit so it was the right thing for them to do and um yeah man kind of that's what you get you played yourself you was mad you wouldn't get the money you was getting or you wasn't getting the notoriety you played yourself for thirty five hundred dollars now your ass going to jail or potentially going to jail it's a damn shame but you deserve everything you get. If what they're saying is true, you deserve all you get because you shit on everybody who supported you. From your communities, the black and LBGT community, and everything else, you shit on that by by faking a crime. This this shit happens to people for real. People really get their ass up for being different, so you're out here fucking with it because you want to boost your fucking profile so you can sell your records and shit. You deserve every motherfucking punishment they get you. Go get my goddamn belt. You need your ass whooped. That's all the energy I'm going to get at. I'm going to move on, be in a better mood. And uh, speaking of music and music news, my man Offset from the Migos, one third of the Migos, helped affirm my decision and my opinion that Takeoff is the best member of the group. He put out a solo album called Father of Four. And that shit was, man, it was, eh, eh. I'm not the biggest, I'm not like a huge Migo fan. I can listen to some of their music. You know what I mean? Stir Fry was fire. I like that. Walking Like I Talk is cool. You got some cool songs on Culture too, and Not enough for me to go back and just play it over and over, but there were some cool songs on there. This last album he just put out, this album he just put out was kind of, eh. I don't know. I don't know what his aim was with this. Maybe he's trying to appeal. I guess he's trying to maybe show more of himself, but I don't know. I just The music quality for me just wasn't there. For me to go back and listen to it again. It was cool to listen to. It's not like it's a bad album. No, it's just Quavo's album to me was bad. I couldn't get through that shit. All the auto-tune and all that shit. There's just not enough room for him outside the group. And I think that's why he's always trying to assert himself as the leader of the group. I'm the honcho. I'm, he's always in the middle. All three of them in the commercial. He's the only one talking. Shit like that. Quavo's always trying to assert himself as the head of the group. 
And maybe it's that way for real. Maybe he's really that guy. Like he, he's like, hey, I'm, I'm the head of this. They move. I, I coach them and shit, and put them in position to do things. But musically, he's, he's not the the best one in the group. He only works well within the group. Or working with somebody else, he's not a, a good solo artist. And that may be true for Offset. He may be a guy that hey, I work good in the group, and my side projects are good. Cool, keep doing that. But the only one who standalone album. Was dope to me was take off shit. Maybe he, because he's more of a rapper, rapper. I don't know. I thought Offset was. I really thought Offset was gonna come out and have a better album. But it ain't go that way. But uh, good luck to him. You know, I wish him the best. They probably gonna come out with the next uh, Culture Three, maybe another good smash album on the Billboards and all that shit. But yeah, the album to me was mediocre than the motherfucker, man. But uh, go check it out. Offset, Father Four. Now, some fire music news. If you're a fan of Wiz Khalifa Currency, I highly encourage you to go get 2009. So if you've never heard How Fly, go back and listen to that first. But it's a project that Wiz Khalifa and Currency put out a while ago. They, you know, they're, well, they both they both were underground rappers with huge followings. Then Wiz Khalifa kind of blew the fuck up and Currency managed to remain on the underground. But they put together a project called How Fly a long time ago, I'd say about 2009. And they've been teasing uh, them putting together an album basically ever since because people have been like, trying to get them to do another one. And they finally got time to do another one. They named it 2009, and that shit is dope. It's dope. It's, if you into the currency in Wiz Khalifa, Pothead, Good Times, Good vibe shit, you will thoroughly enjoy this album. I highly, highly encourage you to go check it out. Go do it. Go check it out. In other music news, Papoose put out an album. Finally, we got an album for Papoose. And uh, it's called Underrated. And it's just, it's, I guess, grown man album. It's real grown man. Uh, I think, I don't think he could make nothing else the way he's been talking about shit. He still got sort of the same flow. It, is, it has evolved over time. I think it still fits for the current time frame we're in now. But it's not like a, I don't, I'm not going to run to it and like, I got to play this motherfucking Papoose. But it was cool, like I listened to it. I'll probably listen to it again here in the next couple of days, but I thought it was dope. My favorite song on there is uh, Third Eye. Uh, he's doing a, a numerical ma- uh, slaughter, like he did Alphabet Slaughter. And there's another song on there called Discipline I really like too, but at least three. So the number slaughter, um, Discipline, and Third Eye, which I think is the best song on there. But it's dope. You should go check it out. And then there's another album by a young man named Ade. That's why I think that's what his name is. Nigerian cat. Got a feature from uh, Wale and Gold Link on the album. But the, always, the album's called Always Something. Or the EP. Or just Project. I don't know what the album or EP is right now. The way the music situation is. But it's called Always Something. And every song has the word something in the title. But it's dope. It's worth checking out. Young kid, man. It's worth checking out a, a new young act. You never know how long they're going to be around. And he got some shit for people. I think he's going to do well. But that's it, man. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. And just, I love my neighborhood. These kids out here walking around, no cars and shit. This one kid got on a Louis backpack. <laughs> just walking around by the mall. Probably got no money. What are we doing, black people? Anyway, man. Um, get at me. No plan this ride at gmail.com. No play 247 on Twitter, capital N, lowercase O, capital P, L A Y, no play 247. Uh, holla at me, let me know what's good. Make your next day your best day. I think the Oscars on. Watch that tonight. That should be good. Check out the Oscars. Um, yeah, man. Be a great person. And before I leave, because I almost forgot, I almost fucking forgot. Go to Netflix. Go to Netflix and make yourself mad. There's a movie on Netflix. You probably heard somebody talking about it. You probably already seen it. I feel like I'm late. There's a documentary on Netflix right now called Abducted in Plain Sight. And I don't want to spoil the movie, so I won't get too far into it. But you will see the height of stupidity in this movie. There's things in this movie that happen that are terrible, awful things. There's also things that happened that were just stupid. 
And I don't think a lot of these things would have happened if I was in that situation. Because I would have been in jail. There was too much shit happening for me to not have gone and done something to where I had to go give myself over to the police. Because that's exactly what I would have done. Something, something A would have happened and that in the, the first time I would have went to jail for assault. Assault, battery, possibly murder. But go watch Abducted in Plain Sight. Go watch it. It is crazy. It is ridiculous. It is uh, It's a shame. It is a real, real shame. But go watch it. Go check it out. And let me know how you feel. No play 247 on Twitter. And uh, gmail.com. No play in the at gmail.com. Let me know. Y'all be good out there. Peace.